Hey woman, you slacked off on laundry again, didn't you? Do you really expect me to do it for you? I've said it over and over. Men shouldn't be bothered with household chores, haven't I? I'm sorry, but I'm planning to take care of the laundry tonight as I'll be working overtime and getting home late. Please trust that I'll handle it all. Don't you dare talk back, wife. Have you forgotten who puts food on the table every single day? You are getting more and more disobedient, Leona. This attitude of yours is new. Maybe I've been too lenient, and now you think you can do whatever the hell you want. No, it's not like that. Oh, don't forget, you owe me big time. Remember? When we got married, you were pushing 40. You were pretty much a lost cause. And that's when I swooped in to save the day. I'm like your personal superhero. A real-life godsend. So how do you repay the person who rescued you, huh? You gotta follow my lead and do whatever I say, got it? Man, it's crazy that I have to remind you of this all over again. I'm sorry. It was my fault. Do you really think so? Yes. Thank you. It's because of your hard work that we can live this life. I'm grateful for everything I've been given. Hey, there's my lovely wife. No worries, as long as you're on the same page. When you get back home, could you handle the laundry for me? Oh, and the house needs a little cleaning too. I kind of made a mess when I spilled some food on the floor. It's starting to stink, you know. I'm counting on you to take care of it when you get home. You'll be back soon, right? By the way, I don't appreciate you working overtime too often. You're the wife, the woman in this family, and it's your role to handle the chores, you know? I know. I'll try to get home as soon as I can. Hello, Leona. Are you free to text? I have something I want to talk to you about. Oh, hi, Lily. How are you? Oh, I'm doing well as usual. How about you? Seems like you've been quite busy lately. I've noticed you don't text me as frequently as before. Yeah, it's been pretty hectic at work and at home, too. I'm sorry I didn't have time to text you as much. That's absolutely fine, dear. I understand that you're dedicated to growing your career. Also a great caretaker for your family. That's truly admirable. By the way, I was wondering if you're still available this Sunday. We're hosting a barbecue party. It would be wonderful if you could join us. That sounds like a lot of fun, Lily. But unfortunately, I have some cleaning to take care of this Sunday. You know how it is. Always something that needs to be done. Well, from what I know, you're quite the pro at keeping your house clean every day, right? I don't think it would be too much trouble if you skip the cleaning just for this Sunday. Plus, the party won't go on for too long, so I'm pretty sure you could make it. Well, even if I wanted to go, Martin probably wouldn't allow me to do so. Oh no, why would he do that? I've told him so many times to take it easy on you. I think he's being too hard on you, sweetheart. Well, he's always been that way ever since we got married. But it's alright. I've gotten used to it. I mean, if I just obey and do everything Martin tells me to do, then we usually don't have any issues. In fact, when he's in a good mood, he treats me really well. But that's just not right, darling. As your husband, he should respect your decision, treat you with kindness no matter what. Seems like you'll have to have another talk with him and set things straight. But let's not be too hard on him. Maybe he's just stressed from work and needs someone to vent to. Anyway, I apologize once again for not being able to make it to the barbecue party this Sunday. Well, I guess I'll have to wait till next time. I was really looking forward to seeing you at the party and having some quality time together. Oh, here's an idea. Do you happen to have some free time during your lunch break tomorrow? Perhaps I could pay a visit to your workplace. We could enjoy a nice lunch together. That sounds wonderful, Lily. I'd love to catch up with you. But are you sure it won't be too much trouble for you? No, of course not. I'll see you at lunch break tomorrow. Hey, Leona! Can you please open the door so Katrina can come inside? I just brought her over and left her at your doorstep, so just wanted to give you a heads up. Oh, and by the way, she could use some food and a bath. She's got that garbage smell going on. That's pretty much all you need to know. 
I'm relying on you. Wait. You're making me babysit her again? Well, obviously. Even though my ex and I are no longer together, you're still her aunt, right? So it's only natural for you to look after her. Plus, I don't really trust anyone else like I trust you. You're just perfect for this role, like you were born to take care of kids. Come on, don't tell me you don't enjoy looking after Katrina. Well, I do love spending time with Katrina. And I think she's a wonderful girl, but... Nuh-uh. No but. You absolutely adore Katrina, and she adores you right back. Every time I get to see her, she can't stop talking about you. In fact, she's always begging me to take her to your place. It's clear that you do an amazing job taking care of her and taking her on fun adventures, right? Honestly, I'm so touched by the incredible bond between you and my daughter. Listen, Francesca, I really appreciate spending time with Katrina. It's truly special for me, especially since I don't have any children of my own. But you're her mom, and I know you only get to see her during your visits because of the custody situation with your husband. Have you considered spending more time with her? Whenever Katrina's with me, she looks at me with those sad eyes and tells me how much she misses you. On her birthday, when she blows out her candles, her wish is always for you to be able to spend more time with her. What's it to you? I don't have time to mess around with that little brat. I've got better things to do, thank you very much. By the way, you're not worth my time either, so let's just end this conversation here. Let's just make sure Katrina is clean, well-fed, and happy when I come to pick her up, all right? Hey, Martin. Don't you think it's a little weird that whenever Katrina comes, Francesca's never around? Can't she spend a little more time with her? Francesca is going through a tough time after her divorce, you know. Unlike you, she's in a fragile, and yet you're blaming her? Come on, show a little empathy for the people around you, for heaven's sake. No, it's not like that at all. I'm just wondering where she goes every time after dropping Katrina off. There's no need for you to know. Just shut up, listen to her, and do as she tells you. Anyway, I won't come home after work today. Where are you going? That's none of your business. Just keep your mouth shut. By the way, I heard you didn't have lunch at the company cafeteria like you always do the other day. Where did you disappear to? Oh, your mom actually came to my workplace and invited me to have lunch with her. So we went to a nearby restaurant. But, wait, how did you find out about that? It doesn't matter how I found out. I've told you multiple times to keep your distance from my mother. Stop going out for lunch with her. You know I don't like it. But why? Is there something wrong with me spending time with your mom? She's always been so kind to me, you know? Since my parents passed away, I've often felt lonely. But everything changed when I met your mom and dad. They embraced me as if I were their own daughter. And it fills my heart with warmth beyond measure. I don't know. I just want to do something to show my gratitude in return. Oh, come on. Do you believe everything you hear? They're just putting on a show of being nice to you. They treat everyone the same, and you're no exception. Now that you know the truth, start keeping your distance from my parents. Don't just go along with whatever they invite you to do. She's actually invited me to her house several times. But I always declined, saying I was too busy. Honestly... It makes me feel guilty whenever I have to turn down her invitations. It seems like she genuinely wants to spend time and catch up with me. I already told you I don't want you hanging out with my mom. Can't you understand that simple concept? I know exactly what you women do when you get together. You always waste time gossiping and badmouthing others, don't you? So tell me, did you badmouth Francesca to my mom? What? No! Why would I do that? I never talk about Francesca to your parents. Good, then keep it that way. I'm sorry, but did Francesca bring her daughter over to your place again yesterday? You... you know about it? 
Honestly, I'd rather not talk about it. Yes. Francesca told me about that herself. It seems like she knows that we have a good relationship. So she pulls these stunts to provoke me or something. <sighs> I thought I raised her with strictness, but she never really listened to me. She's in the whole nightclub scene, you know? Nightclubs? That's right. And she seems to have considerable debt, too. I have no idea. Whenever Francesca comes to our house, she always dresses in branded clothes and seems well off. I'm sorry, but I think I'm divorcing Martin. Oh, you're leaving him? Well, I can't say I'm not saddened by it, but it's okay, dear. Everyone has their limits when it comes to tolerance. I'm sorry for all the trouble he's causing you. I know it's not easy to live with a man like him. Rest assured, I'll support you wholeheartedly. So do you have any plans in mind yet? Well, I'll start preparing for the divorce soon. If you need anything, just give me a call. I'd be glad to help. Thanks, Lily. I'm so blessed to have you as my mother-in-law. Hey, Leona. The packages are starting to arrive. I need you to tidy up our room so Francesca can move in. Wait. What? I don't understand what you mean. Why is Francesca moving in? Is she gonna live with us? Duh. What else could I possibly mean? But why? Doesn't she already have a place of her own? That's none of your business. I'm the owner here, and when I say my sister is moving in, that's how it's gonna be. Now lend me a hand in cleaning up the room and clearing out your stuff, because from now on, it's gonna be Francesca's room. Wait, when did you tell me about this? You can't just make all the decisions on your own. Remember, I live here too, so this is my house as well. What did I tell you about not talking back to me, huh? Listen up. It doesn't matter what your opinion is because I'm the one in charge here. I've already made up my mind that my sister will live here. End of story. If you don't like it, then go ahead and divorce me. No one's forcing you to stay. In fact, we'd be a lot happier if you were gone. Well, suit yourself. I don't care whether Francesca stays with us or not. But I won't lift a finger to help you with anything. If you want it done, then go ahead and do it yourself. What? How dare you defy my orders? You are going to be in a world of trouble when I get back, Leona. Get ready to face the consequences. So, have you finished with all the cleaning and house moving stuff? I can imagine how exhausting it must have been for you and Francesca to tidy up our room and unpack all her stuff. Such hard work, right? How dare you ask me that question? Are you trying to make a fool out of me or something? Where the hell have you been all day long? You should have been here helping us instead of hiding somewhere, avoiding your responsibilities. What a pathetic, lazy sloth you've become. <laughs> Sorry. It must be tough for you, huh? What are you laughing at? Do you even have a clue what time it is right now? Get your lazy butt back here and make dinner for us. We're starving. Look, are you absolutely sure it's okay to let Francesca live with you? I mean, did you hear about her debts? Wait, what? Debts? I haven't heard anything about that. You're just making things up to create doubt between me and my sister, aren't you? Nice try, but I'm not falling for your little trick. Well, if you want all the details, you can go ahead and ask your mom. She probably knows more about it than anyone else. Or even better, why don't you confront Francesca directly? After all, you're her beloved brother. So she wouldn't lie to you, would she? Wait, let me have a conversation with her about this. I can't let you go around slandering her like this. Sure, go ahead. I'd like to see you prove me wrong. Well, I just talked with Francesca and she assured me that it's just a minor debt and she'll have it paid off in no time. Well, would you look at that? Isn't that just amazing? Calling $150,000 a small debt? I couldn't say that about such a high amount. Rich people are surely different. What? $150,000? The guy from the nightclub. 
He recently got married, right? Francesca got dumped, huh? I'm not dumped. Once I get this house, he'll come back to me. And when we sell this place, the money. Oh. Oh, right. That's your plan from the very beginning, right? I feel so bad for Martin. Or maybe not. <laughs> Wait, what's happening here? Francesca just grabbed the phone from my hands. But can you please explain to me what's going on? Francesca suddenly stopped talking to me, and she looks really pale. Tell me, what's this plan you're talking about? Well, Francesca plans to kick me out then, eventually you, and sell the house. With the money, she'd pay off her debts and fund the nightclub guy. What the hell is this? I can't believe it. Was I being played all along? Did she deceive me into letting her stay in my house just so she could sell it behind my back? Yeah, that's probably it. Look, I don't want to say this out loud, but it seems like your beloved sister has been using you from the very start. So it was all a big lie? I was actually making plans to work and support both my sister and Katrina once they moved in. You do realize how absurd that sounds. You couldn't even support me, your own wife. But you were planning to support your sister and niece? Can't you see? To Francesca, you're nothing more than an ATM. Once she sells the house, she'll dump you like a sack of potatoes and go back to her lover. What do you mean? Between the two of us, I'm always the one who makes more money, right? Well, actually, it's the opposite. I've always been the one earning more. But somewhere along the line, you seem to have conveniently forgotten about all of that. You started deluding yourself into thinking you make more than me, and I foolishly stopped defending myself because I thought it would only make you angrier. But I realized that was a mistake on my part now. But, but what about Katrina? She's my niece, and she needs me to be there for her. She needs my help. I'll be a terrible brother and uncle if I can't take care of my own sister's daughter. Who says she needs your help? Remember, her father has custody of her, right? And let me tell you, he takes better care of her than anyone else ever could. But Francesca told me that Katrina would be moving in and living with me from now on. I was so happy to hear that. I thought it would give me an opportunity to bond with my niece. Wait, is that a lie as well? What else has she lied to me about? Listen. Katrina didn't come to your house today with any intention of living together with you or anything like that. Honestly, do you really think she wants to live with you and her deadbeat mother? It's crystal clear that Francesca isn't invested in her daughter's life. She came today just to inform us that Katrina will be studying abroad for high school. What? I never heard anything like that. Well, she came to our house today just to say goodbye. You can ask Katrina all about it if you want. She... she just told me that everything you said is true. See? I told you so. Look, Leona, I'm really sorry, all right? I never imagined that my own sister would betray me like this. I should have paid more attention to your advice. It's all on me. From now on, I promise to listen to you and value your input. So, can you please forgive me? I told you before not to involve yourself with Francesca. But you didn't listen. Wh what? Now the only choice is divorce. Let's get a divorce. I'll also claim alimony for your verbal abuse. And let's see, maybe for infidelity too. Infidelity? What are you talking about? You recognize this woman, don't you? Did you take secret photos? If someone's doing something they shouldn't, isn't it their fault? I've already left the divorce documents at home, so please sign them. Fine. I'll sign, okay? Happy now? Thank you for everything. Though I made more money than all the housework and handles everything else, it was me who took care of everything. So, take care. Don't forget the payments.
Please, Leona. Can you find a way to persuade Katrina to let me live with her? I mean, it's going to be really tough for a young girl like Katrina to live in a foreign country all by herself, right? If I live with her, I can provide her with all the help she needs. I'll be there for her every step of the way, making up for all the time I've missed with her. Don't you think it's a fantastic idea? Have you no shame, Francesca? What do you mean? What's wrong with me wanting to be together with my daughter? It must be wonderful living abroad. While Katrina's at school, I can go to the beach or go shopping. When she's at her part-time job, I'll take a nap. At night, I'll go out a bit. And by go out at night, you mean chasing after men? Well, I wouldn't exactly phrase it like that, but... It would be such a missed opportunity if some great young men come my way and I turn them down, right? You truly have a unique way of doing things, Francesca. All you talked about was leisure, without mentioning anything about work. Honestly, with that lazy lifestyle of yours, you'll end up being more of a burden to Katrina than a help. Hey, watch your mouth. I'm her real mother, not you. And on top of that, did you even listen to what Katrina said? She clearly stated that she'll be staying in a dormitory. So you can't just come along. I see right through your intentions, Francesca. The only reason you want to go abroad and live with Katrina is because you think they'll cover all your living expenses. Am I right? That... that's none of your concern. Just convince Katrina to let me live with her. Martin already kicked me out of the house. He even threw all my belongings out the door. I can't believe he had the audacity to do that. It's absolutely outrageous. He never treated me like this before. This is all you're doing. You need to sort this out. Enough is enough. How much longer are you going to cause trouble for everyone, Francesca? Do you still remember how it felt when I slapped you yesterday? What? Who is it? Is it Mom? It's your mother speaking. I'm using Leona's phone to text you. You're awful. How could you hit me like that? You deserved it. I was wrong to leave you alone after causing trouble to Leona. We've arranged for you to stay with a relative. I'm coming to pick you up and we'll go there. What? What relative? But I don't want to go. Too late. Your father and I have already arrived. Now open the door for us. After bidding farewell to Katrina, I left the house behind. I made arrangements to retrieve my belongings later and checked into a nearby hotel. The room was clean. The bed was soft. And there were no complaints from anyone. This was the moment I regained my freedom after five long years. The very next day, I wasted no time and filed for divorce, finally liberating myself completely. Lily called to apologize and assured me that Martin would deposit the alimony within a week, which he did promptly and in full. Due to Martin's limited savings from supporting Francesca, my in-laws had already paid the alimony in advance. They informed me that Martin had lost his job and was sent to live with another relative. His new life consisted of tolling on a farm from sunrise to sunset, without any breaks. With no car and unfamiliarity with the mountain's roads, escape was impossible for Martin, who had never driven on such terrain. While I acknowledged that it was a tough situation, I couldn't summon any sympathy for him. Kevin's affair partner turned out to be a club girl who regarded him merely as a paying customer. She wasn't even aware that he was married and apologized when we met. She even returned the designer bags Martin had given her, which I sold to fund lunches with Katrina. Francesca, on the other hand, was sent to live with relatives near the sea, working tirelessly from dawn till dusk. Her once meticulously maintained appearance, including her hair and nails, 
had now deteriorated significantly. Evidently, she had fallen behind on child support payments for Francesca, and her relatives were now covering the expenses, leaving her with unpaid work. I could only hope that this experience would lead her to reconsider her ways. Meanwhile, Katrina successfully embarked on her journey abroad and now resides in a dormitory overseas. She has grown close to her roommate, and I receive messages from her detailing her daily adventures. She plans to bring her friend during a long break, and I have agreed to host them for sightseeing. As for myself, my days remain busy. Without the burden of a failing marriage, my workload has been significantly reduced. There is no longer anyone to complain or argue with. It is a different kind of busyness, one that brings me a sense of fulfillment. During Katrina's departure, I had the opportunity to meet her father, Francesca's ex-husband, for the first time. He is a kind-hearted man, and we exchanged contact information. As we kept in touch regarding Katrina's well-being, we began spending time together. In his company, I found a sense of peace that I never experienced with Martin. Even I am surprised by the feelings that have developed between us. Katrina is thrilled about my connection with him. During a recent video call, she asked, When are you getting remarried? While I am not actively considering it at the moment, if he feels the same, perhaps someday. To me, Katrina is like a true daughter. And she feels the same way about me. Building a real family would bring me immeasurable happiness. With this hope in my heart, I had to work today, just like any other day.